The internet's not mad at Rikina. We're simply disappointed. Rikina has an issue with his community. I feel like I should just write him an email at this point. <laughs> but I don't know. Maybe public therapy. Where I don't know. It's it's. I put me in an awkward. It puts me once again, as with Dick Masters, and it puts me puts me in an awkward situation where I like someone and I want what's best for them, but at the same time. If I don't say anything about them, then people will assume that I'm giving them preferential treatment. And what I say really doesn't matter. I, I don't know. People say that what I say actually does have an impact, but I'm just one guy. Okay, so listen up. Here's the thing with Rakeda. I'm going to try to be as neutral as possible and um, as honest as I possibly can be in my advice. If you don't know, he has currently signed a contract, an I think an exclusivity contract with Rumble. He's now on Rumble. His audience is doing just fine he still gets thousands and thousands of viewers on rumble he has a locals page which is a patreon and it does very well he has super chats coming in and they do very well my man Rakeda, who started off analyzing the dick um the maddox lawsuit for dick masterson is his own thing bigger than dick masterson bigger than me he he's doing very well and i'm happy for him because he seems like a nice guy uh, his wife seems like a nice person, and he has a bunch of kids, and they're all white, so I want what's best for them, and him having money is a good thing. Objectively, as far as I'm concerned, for society, that is a good thing. The issue is, is that now that he's in this later phase of his internet career type thing, he is making mistakes that I have seen before. And I will try to outline this in a way that anybody, any impartial observer could observe and come to these conclusions. This is the locals chat format. So they could Patreon thing. And yes, he did go to the bat for the forum. I, I have many reasons to like Rikato. But he says, in reply to someone, what's Ki Kiwi Farms' problem with you? And this is something, like, his, he has gone and said that the Kiwi Farm says awful things about me, but I still check up on it, and I know that there's some idiots there, but whatever. Um, I find it useful. Uh, and I believe that they have the right to, to freedom of speech. That's, that was his position before. But now he says this. They want me to be their trad con dad because i need guidance and direction but i like tits and being naked and talking about sex and not pretending pretending to be an insult this is cope this is i do not like what people are saying about me and i'm going to rationalize what they are saying i do not want to listen to their advice because i don't believe what they're saying is i i don't want to do what they suggest um i'm going to rationalize this by saying that they are all in self gets um, they don't like tits, they don't like being naked, they don't like sex, and they're incels. This is hope. Oh, um, and I think I, I can explain better. Nick isn't streaming tonight because he drove off, drove the new Mustang off a road. Drex just shared this after joining Apparel with Good Logic's channel. Drex says the road was icy, Nick was only doing 35 and a 60. Nick is alright, the car is fine, he'll be turned away. I had a friend, I used to, I talked about this, um, there's a clip called Trailer Park Days where I lived with a friend in a trailer. I lived in a double wide trailer with a, with my friend, his mom, his mom's third husband, his sister, his sister's baby, his sister's baby's daddy, and his long-term girlfriend, and a feral cat. And, uh, I, I had fun and I changed a lot during those years. And I remember the cat would scratch the fuck out of me all the time. And then one, one time it got into heat and it would sit on my so shoulder like a parrot and it would rub its butt up against me. And I'd be like, cat, get the fuck off of me. And then if I tried to touch the cat, it would then immediately freak out and claw the shit out of me again. And then it would um, sit on my shoulder again when I got horny again. I'm just like, cat, what the fuck is wrong with you? Get off of me. Now, yeah, that was fun. It was fun up until his brother had a schizophrenic episode and tried to stab me. And my friend had like a sixth sense about Mustangs. Anytime he saw a Mustang, if there was a Mustang driving nearby, he would point to that Mustang and say, look at that f it driving that shitty Mustang. Mustangs are such, such shit cars. And I heard this over and over again for the entire time that I knew him and we lived together. He ridiculed Mustangs. So the 40-year-old man buys a Mustang. You know what's going on. Everyone knows what's going on. Um... I am now in a position in my life where I can, I have some time away from my kids. I don't have to watch over them all the time. Um, I have money for the first time and I have, but remains in my youth. I'm going to buy a Mustang and I'm going to drive down the icy roads of Minnesota to have fun. Anyway, so y'all, you know what, you know what it means when someone drives a car at that age and that's fine. The main thing, the main thing that he does not get over. Um, and I, I'll play this clip here to explain this, what his position. I mean, this is, this should not be a secret. And Lady Raggets knows this. Guys, my my goal every 
every day. Uh, I love sex. I love I love uh, all parts of human sexuality. They make me really happy. I like engaging in them. And uh, I would do it all the time. And so if I get to do that, great. If I don't, I'm okay. But uh, I don't know what else my daily goal would be. I'm at this weird place where I've kind of like hit all of the other Maslow shit. And so, uh, you know, that's, that's what's left. Like, what else do I have to fucking do? I've got the... I've got the income. I'm fortunate enough to have the income locked down. I've got kids. I've got food. I've got shelter. I've got clothing. I've got all of the basic needs taken care of. That's that's it. Get a hobby. Get a hobby that is not that is not weird sex shit on your podcast. I th this is what baffles me. You have money. You have time. And your kids are doing well. Get a fucking hobby. Do you have think about what might happen in the event of civil war? Do you have a renewable source of food? Do you have a generator? Do you have these things set up? Do you have do you have protection? Do you know how to shoot? Like get a hobby. If you want to get into cars, fine. That's a good hobby. Get your Mustang and then build up your garage and fuck around with your Mustang. Get a hobby. Don't fuck your life up. <laughs> because let me explain. Okay, his current choice of the weird incestuous shit with women, wine moms posting their nudes in his local chat is driving a rift between him and his own fan base. It's not the, the forum can be indicative of what people may think, but I'll be honest. Like I used to watch a lot of his streams and I haven't watched them very recently because they're usually quite long and they're quite parasocial. Unless you understand what's happening with like the in jokes and the people who super chat all the time and the, the frequent comers. Like, I don't know what, what to get out of it. When I watched, I, I was curious about something. I want I, I wanted to be lost playing too. Explain to me the thing that's happening. I don't give a fuck about your locals. I don't give a fuck about your Discord drama. I don't give a fuck about the people who super chat you all the time or they're dead cats or their dad that has cancer and their GoFundMes. I don't care. Um, so it, it's hard for me to watch stuff when it, it's drifted so far away from what it was that was successful. And that's a bad thing. And when people on the forum are, who are big fans of you are explaining to you why they're no longer interested and your reaction is to demean them as incel faggots that are looking for a father figure, um, that, that, that hurts, <laughs> that hurts what you've built up. And I think that this clip is about that is him rebuking the, the criticisms. Just, guys, I'm 41. No oh, wait, I'm 41. I've spent 20 years of my life. No, this is him justifying why why he is going to incorporate sex into his law explaining thing. Having as much fun as possible because I was worried about other the way other people thought about things, the way other people interpreted things, the way other people judged things. And interestingly enough, it was people that were like close to us. And I don't give a fuck about them anyway cuz fuck off. In general, like, if, if you know me, you know, like, I don't give a shit anyway. But uh, <laughs> certainly, like, don't give a fuck about what people on the internet think. Like, that's that's a whole separate story. But, but that's different. It's okay to not care what people on the internet said. He didn't care what people on the internet said about him a while ago. But now he has to address it all the time. And I'll explain why that's a very shitty position to take. So that's... That's coming. That's coming to me because I don't give a shit. And the second Lady Rackets is there with me, I don't give a shit at all. Which, by the way, I kind of want to make a personal thing where it sounds like he's trying to convince her to adopt these things that she is not inclined towards at the moment. Um, that comes across poorly to me, just saying. I'll have fun, I'll have a blast. I, I don't, guys, when you work your whole life for someone else and you have to abide by rules and then suddenly you don't have them, my God, you get to be you. You get to be you. And all I want to do in life is just be me. And me is simple. Me is simple. I'm a horny, happy motherfucker. Those two things, honestly, and 
by horny, I don't mean I want to fuck everybody who walks by who's hot. I, like I will appreciate, I'll appreciate attractive people, of course. I'll appreciate sexy women a hundred percent of the time, unapologetically. Sexy women are great. I want all women to look uh, to look fucking fantastic. And then, and then Lady Rackets and I will go home together. It'll be fun. We'll have a good time. And I don't, I don't really give a shit what other people think or or do about it. And as soon as uh, as soon as everybody's on the same page as me, fuck it. There's a part I don't think it was a part of this clip where he says that. There's a bunch of people who are unhappy with the inclusion of sexual content in the stream, and then a bunch of people who are very thrilled with it. And it's like, you're, you're trying to, your stream is a product. You're trying to get it to as many people as possible. And when half of them don't like something, it doesn't matter if the other half do, you're needlessly gimping your own content. Um, and that hurts your long-term prospects. You're happy that you're in a good place right now, but if you intentionally try to agitate the fuck out of people who are providing that, you're disadvantaging yourself. He says that um, he doesn't care what people on the internet say about him. The issue with that is when you have the internet as your job, those are the people who watch your streams, who encourage Rumble to sign contracts with you, to encourage who sign up on your locals, who send in super chats. I mean, you don't care what they think. It's, um, detrimental to your bottom line. Even if you have a, like a good amount of cash sitting in bank right now, you're gonna hurt your your prospects long term. And I don't know why that has to be explained. I think that the issue is he drinks too much. Um, I hate to say that, but I think that it would benefit him to not drink as much. I think that he needs a hobby. I think that he's bored and he is um, not handling the middle age thing well, especially because now that he is doing well financially, he wants to explore things that he didn't have the opportunity to in his 20 years of monogamy, right? And I think that he misunderstands what cool and aloof is. It's like, if you're, you can do whatever you want. You can um, have whatever hobbies you want. You can have your weird sex escapades if you want. You can play with your baldo if you want. Um, you can let Drexel, uh, <laughs> you can go to Jamaica, right? And have all sorts of weird fun that you want. The problem is, is that when you let that, come into your content and disrupt what it is uh it negatively impacts you um which i don't want to see obviously because i like him and the other thing is that very specifically with what he's doing is that he wants to fuck his fans he is using his locals as a way for people to share nudes and this will be a disaster for him it is going to absolutely fuck up his whole life if he lets his his social media things become venues for him to fuck his fans. Um, I will show an example of this. He has a clip channel <clears throat> called Elisa and Elisa or Elisa or Elisa. And again, they all post their fucking nudes on locals or whatever. She goes into their discord and she's like an active clipper that brings his rumble content to YouTube for, for him. He's she's now in their um, discord saying, uh, Hey, I'm being revenge porn in your Discord. Legitimately fix it now. And then Little Ween says, Have fun living off your Michael's parents, you dumb fucking leech. He says, I trust you boys will clean it up. I don't know who the other mods are. Thanks. He, he says, Fuck you, Eliza. You fucking disgusting person. You're a hum hum horrible human. Eat shit. And she's complaining that in his Discord, I think this is in his Discord, that she put out booby videos or whatever on locals, or people found that independently because she was involved with Rakeda. And now they're like posting it in Discord and ridiculing her. And I don't know if you remember this guy called um, Vic Mignogna. He was kind of this, he was it, he's kind of obscure. He did like um, English voice acting for for uh, for anime dubs and stuff. And he got accused of sexual harassment, and it kind of ruined his whole fucking life and uh, derailed his career for years and years. It was a big deal, and. Uh, the lesson to learn from that is don't fuck your fans. The easiest thing in the world, don't fuck your fans. Don't make your fans like a sexual component of your online career. Don't do that. That's going to be um, a disaster. When I'm reading this and I'm seeing, oh my God, the, this guy that knows that is like, knows, talks to Rick and or Nick in some way and is like involved in this weird sex shit on locals 
and, and is now being revenge porn by people who are i think mods of his uh discord uh i'm thinking like ding 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 red alert red alert last chance to exit before cataclysmic fuck up before retard drama that ruins your whole life ding 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 warning warning red alert big fucking deal get out abort abort i'm i'm like uh i'm hearing this in my head it's, it's not it's not a good thing <laughs> it's kind of alarming um like literally just don't do this don't don't do this um do explain the law and and i you know the last time that i latched his stuff he was explaining this um court stuff that was going on and he had all these people and he had like politicians like a female politician who was running for office and his chat was asking her about like Futanari and stuff. And it was like and sexually harassing her and, and asking for feet pics and stuff. And she kind of laughed it off, but it was really awkward to me. And it's like, you can, there's a lot more you can do. You're satisfied with where you're at, but you can do, you can still do better. You can still expand your audience. Why would you, why would you deliberately want to make things worse? Because you want to like, you know, if you if you go out, it's like you go out and you, you do weird sex stuff and you get caught doing it and you have to brush it off. That's one thing. It's another when you are actively integrating the shit into your your locals and your your Discord is causing these problems and shit. And it's all completely avoidable. It's all completely avoidable. Literally, all you gotta do, pull up, pull up, terrain, pull up. Why? Oh, Just pull up. Oh, Just pull up. Oh, Just pull up. It's all you gotta do. I don't. <laughs> I don't understand. Um. So I. I don't know. Again, I like him. I, I. We're not like best friends or anything. I talk to him sometimes. Uh. And I guess I could have just wrote, wrote him a fucking email and be like. But I don't know. I had like a little chat around Christmas because he was having like he was. He wanted to tell me the same thing that Dick Masterson told me before we stopped talking. He wanted to say, like, man, people on your side sure are fucking dumb. And I, I was like, yeah, you know, people can be dumb and they can speculate, speculate, you know, and have rumors and shit run wild and stuff. But, you know, people expect better and yada yada. So I don't know if I gave him, like, the wrong information or if I just wasn't persuasive enough. Um, but nobody, nobody ever listens to me. Just a retard chat. I'm just a, I'm just an old man, an old slobber mutt. <laughs> Nothing much to say. Very, very perplexing situation. I mean, he can like if he wants to read his thread, that's fine. Because I think that the feedback that they're giving him, because I, I went through it, and I'm, I'm looking at people posting all sorts of stuff from his locals and from his Discord and stuff. That's like, these are warning signs. These are the flashing red lights. These are this is the stick shake in the Boeing 737, letting you know, oh, you're stalling midair. Um, you gotta pull up. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know what to say. My, like again, uh, just to reiterate, my advice was uh, stop drinking, especially on air, as much. Um, make your private life private again. Get a fucking hobby. Go plant a garden. You know, that's a fun thing you can do with your kids, too. I know that the, the whole thing is, like, I want to get away from the kids for some time, but you can plant, you can do stuff that isn't, you know, fraternizing with horrors in locals. And I, I think it's, you know, I realize that he's older than me, and he has more life experience than I do. But the thing that, it's like when you're a man, you go through your entire life, and you are never flattered, right? You go through life, and you're, you easily can just hide in plain sight if you really choose to. And then suddenly you're an, an internet person. And even, uh, you know, a person like me, I get crazy ladies sending me emails and stuff. And I have to tell them, sorry, I, d I don't talk to women that I meet through my podcast. I just don't. I don't do that at all. I don't fraternize online because that would be a bad idea. But it, it can be tempting sometimes because, you know, you don't ever get that attention. I think even though Riketa is older than me, he still is like coming to popularity around the same time. You know what I mean? 
So it's like a novel thing. Like I, I was a married in bumfuck nowhere, Minnesota, my entire life. And now that I'm 40 something and I have money, all these wine, wine moms are sending me titty pictures and stuff. And it's like empowering and it's like exciting. Um, but they are, there has to be some biblical reference for this, right? Tempters. It's, it's like they, they, if they're doing that, they enjoy, there's a real thing. I don't know. It's hard to say for any particular person in locals is like this kind of person, but there are women out there who, and like the dy- the female dynamic of mine, there are women who want to find an unmarried, uh, you know, single man. And then there are women who are like mongooses and they don't want to find, they don't want to make a nest. They want to find a nest that's already built and then eat all the eggs in the, in the nest and then steal the man bird that helped build that nest and lay their own eggs in there. You know what I mean? I don't know what what, what you would get, like a cow bird. I don't know. They they don't. What I'm trying to say is that they don't look for healthy to build healthy relationships. They look for healthy relationships they can destroy and replace the the woman in them. That is a real thing. There are women who like that. It definitely has some sort of evolutionary success rate where there's a fork in psychology where some women want to build things and some women want to replace women in existing healthy relationships. I think that exists. Um, the cuckoo. Yeah, sure. Maybe. Um, but yeah, I, I, whenever I see women doing this and they're like trying to get next attention, I'm like, yeah, that's like a, that's like a psycho lady. That's like a parasite. That's like a brood parasite. That's trying to destroy things. And it's like, you shouldn't pressure your, your wife into being a part of that. Cause that's going to destroy things. Um, and as, as he says, I'm 40, I, I have all my money, I have everything in order, I'm perfectly happy in my life, and I just want to do new things. Don't, for the love of fucking God, do not use that as an excuse to destroy those things you're already happy with. For the love of God, don't, like, if you have, like, you have a winning formula, and you're like, um, what do I do with this winning formula? I have this winning, fo- I'm so successful in my life, I'm so happy and content with my position, should I fuck it all up? That would be exciting. I built this house of cards. Maybe I can just pull out cards from the bottom and see what happens. It might look cool. Like, no, no, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> so why? Very, very sad. 